Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Alright, here's a snapshot of most of the tools and equipment I used. Uh, my coolant bottle's missing. I don't know where I set it. But let me go ahead and list this out on a detailed list so you can pause and take an inventory of it. Here's page one of the tools I used. This is the rest of the tools that I use for the motor swap. You also want to make sure you have some of this absorbent dry stuff for sopping up your oil after you get done. Now this video doesn't have detailed instructions like some of the other ones. It's more of a step-by-step -step kind of a brief uh, checklist thing. So you need to have a decent skill level if you're going to do this. I would say your skill level needs to be at least a 3 out of 5 to attempt to swap a motor. In dealing with the motor swap, I didn't have much, uh, many surprises or issues. The only thing is, I did have to take my turbo loose from the exhaust downpipe in order to get the motor out because I had problems getting the motor past the exhaust manifold. So there's three bolts I took loose there. I took loose the little clamp there, and I took loose the four bolts that bolted the turbo to the exhaust manifold. I took off this wastegate and I twisted and pivoted the uh, the turbo flange back so that I can get the motor out from the exhaust manifold. So let's go ahead and start the install. This is going to take probably about eight hours to get the motor installed. Okay, I have the motor lowered in place. However, I could not do it with this front bracket on for that front hydraulic mount or with this front motor mount installed properly. So I had to take the back bolt loose, remove the front bolt, remove the front bolt, pivot it out of the way before I could get the motor to drop in place where I can get that uh, flywheel connected to the torque converter. Okay, I got three or four bolts started to mount the motor to the transmission. And then I came down here and installed this front mount to hold the front of the engine in place. So, now I'm going to go ahead and remove the lift and go around the motor and install the rest of these engine mount bolts. I got three or four of them loose from up top. And if I got them lined up on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and torque those down. Okay, I torqued the bolts on the bottom, 37 foot-pounds. I had one, two, three, four, five of them. Okay, now that I got my mounting bolts torqued all the way around, next I'm going to install the bolts from my flywheel to my torque converter. And those are supposed to be torqued to 28 Newton measures. Whenever you need to convert newton measures to foot pounds you multiply the newton measures by 75 percent and you're almost exactly have your newton measure your foot pounds so i'm gonna do it to 21 foot pounds okay i got the exhaust manifold in place i could not do that without removing that bracket right there and taking this exhaust manifold loose from the turbo removing the wastegate taking the clamp loose on that uh, turbo and spinning that part of the exhaust pivoting the top of it back that was the only way I could get the exhaust manifold in place so I reset those bolts tighten them all down next thing I did was put in the oil supply line up there let me get a better picture of that I put on the oil supply line right there. It's a 19 millimeter. I didn't want to make it too tight. Next thing I'm going to do is hook up that little vacuum line up there to that little nipple there. 
Then I'm going to come over here and hook up my oil return line to the bottom of the turbo. And then I'm going to hook up the coolant line over to that pipe over there. Next, I put the carrier bearing bracket on, a 12 millimeter on the bottom, and two 14 millimeters up top. So I got the four bolts in the air conditioner compressor, got it all uh, secure. Now I'm going to plug it in on the wiring harness. Installed the upper and lower radiator hoses, and as you can see, I put clamps on those clips. I don't normally do that, but it had clamps on there, so I went on ahead and put them on. Okay, I got the alternator in, bolts on top, bottom, all three positions. I got the power steering pump bracket in place. I put the thermostat in, thermostat housing. I plugged in the coolant temp sensor. I hooked up the alternator, the sense wire, hooked up the starter, installed the two bolts on it, put the sense wire on the back of it. I put that bracket in place for the lower manifold. And now I'm about to uh, put the manifold in place. I also put the ground wire down here and plugged in the oil uh, sensor. Okay, I got the spark plugs installed, the intake manifold installed, the PVC system installed on the motor. Now I'm going to hook up some vacuum lines. I put the motor pretty much in time so I can assemble the back side of the motor. So. Let me go ahead and make sure all my exhaust manifold bolts are torqued down and then uh, start on the right side, the driver's side of the motor. Okay, I hooked up my coolant lines from the heater core. I hooked up the lower radiator hose. I hooked up the little beady vacuum line that runs off of that white tube back there to that little metal tube. I plugged in my crank sensor and my cam sensor. I put this bracket in here that holds those sensors in place and I put the 14 millimeter bolt there. I made sure that that bracket was by uh, on the right side of the manifold, torqued that bolt down. I plugged in my uh, idle control valve, plugged in my throttle body, hooked up a vacuum on the bottom of that from the brake booster. Now I'm gonna hook up the uh, vacuum lines on the front of the manifold and start installing my intake tube. Okay, I got the vacuum on the front of the manifold. I got the fuel rail installed. I got the uh, water bottle hooked up. The coolant lines connected on the back. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is plug in the water bottle and hook up my radiator hose. I also put the bolt in the oil pan and I put the bracket on the back of the fuel lines on the back of the motor. So, in finishing up the install, of course you're going to install your your motor mount, your upper motor mount there, put your intake tubing in place, make sure that all of your uh, air box and battery and all of that stuff is hooked up and connected and uh, uh, make sure your fuel line is tight and it, you shouldn't have much issues there. Also put this bracket on those bolts in there and uh, when I went to fill up my coolant, one of the heater core lines going to the motor was leaking so I had to pull some stuff back off of that, put that uh, trim about a half inch off that hose, put that back together, stop that leak. And then I didn't tighten my fuel line down all the way with my wrench. So when I started the vehicle, I had a fuel leak there. Now the motor I got, I pulled out of a salvage yard. It had a hard time starting. Not sure if it was because of the fuel leak or if it just had the lawnmower syndrome where it had to build up compression and finally fired. Once it started up, the idle smoothed out within 30 seconds and that motor's been running smooth and strong ever since. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. 
You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.